that sprint's going to be super chaotic. I think looking at the caliber of people here, I think if a break does go, it might be like 12 people, kind of like snowing. I think it's going to be a big break, and it might go late. Okay. I don't know if, it might, I don't know if it's anything to do with the first lap. Yeah, it could be in the second. Uh, so what, what's, uh, give me my, my task, what's my goal? Well, if, do basically we, just... we don't want to initiate anything, we want to be in everything, so we want to follow. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, if we're not in something, then you you're probably would be a workhorse to help Chaz by I think it's, frog, but we just we just need to be attentive and we just need but to get we should break. always be in the top 15-ish guys. Okay. Okay, boys, we're racing. The stacked field, 72 guys here now 72 period is going to be a difficult race especially with the center line rule let alone the absolute hitters uh best buddies has basically world tour caliber guys um it's so many of the teams here echelon uh, amino rip uh basically every single team is phenomenal so I have to cover this first move because that's my goal. That's my job is to work for Nick and Chaz. And even though this first initial move probably isn't going to go anywhere, it would be an absolute tragedy to let the f uh, very first move slip away and us not have a guy in it. So I'm having to do this. I did 500 and something wants for the first minute of the race. Like, welcome back to racing. Vomit. Now, I'm not totally sure why Chaz was trying to bridge to this move. Uh, that was my whole, that was why I did this, is that so Chaz didn't have to burn any matches. He did shut it down and went back to the group. Um, I barely made it onto these guys. And it was, you know, it was, it was a good makeup. It's just so early on, right? And there's so many guys. Uh, again, this, this was kind of doomed from the beginning. But uh, this dude right here, the, uh, the Amino Rip, Amino, rip your legs off. This boy was so strong. A lot of the guys here, I mean, you can see that guy doesn't miss a meal. You know what I mean? Like, he doesn't look like a typical cyclist, but his raw power was just unbelievable. He actually took this turn really, really well. I, I didn't even know we were going to take this turn. We were going so fast into it. Uh, and then he just kind of blew up the brake. Um, we all had to, to work pretty hard to get back on terms with each other. I mean, that Amino Rip guy was just, he was ripping. Uh, everyone here was ripping. Everyone was going fast. The course is so fast, but the I don't know if it's like because it's humid or if the road surface is just really bad. Um, but it was really strange in the draft, almost going like downhill, you're still having to put out a lot of watts. It's very similar to Zwift where there wasn't really any part of the course where you could just soft pedal or or not pedal at all. Um, it was it was difficult. So then we worked, I worked that break pretty hard, but you can see the guys are coming. And I just kind of want to show you me falling back through the pack here and just how many fit muffers are in this group. And also, I really... I should have done a better job at staying closer to the front because it took me maybe two laps to get back to where I was. Uh, but I mean, that breakaway, I was pretty all in on that breakaway. And so I'm trying to recover here and I'm doing still 300 something wants and going super backwards. Being in the back was really difficult uh, because of these 90 degree turns. You know, everyone kind of scored to get bunched up and just these like stretches, right? It would get real strung out every one of these little 90 degree turns. And it took me a while to sort of shake off the dust. You know, it, it, it's been a while, man. And I did though, I, I felt like I got really more comfortable as the race went on. Uh, you can see guys really pushing the boundaries of these roads. The center line rule, boy, it was enforced 5%. You know, it was kind of crazy. In California, when we race, you know, if you go over that center line rule, they'll just pull you out of the race. Uh, and so a lot of guys were pushing the absolute limits uh, of these roads. Uh, the snaps out of these turns, man, I forgot just how difficult that is. But so my goal again now is to get back up to the front to try to work for Chaz and Nick. Because right now I can't even see the front. I have no idea what's going on up there. So I am useless to the team. 
you know, and I jumped in that first initial break, but I have to become relevant in this race. We, we flew too far, we came too far to, for me to just sit back here and make videos. And so, you know, again, coming into the finish, man, uh, this isn't the last lap, but as you can see, 1K to go. Guys are darting off onto the road. I'm trying to move up. I almost thought about just plowing off onto the side of the grass, but I didn't want to get flat. I just thought that would kind of actually pretty look sort of cool. Anyways, coming out of these turns, everyone's snapping, everyone's snapping, and I got to try to move up to the front because there, I believe there was a move up the road. It wasn't that far up the road, but guys starting to try to leak off, try to make a chase group. Uh, the snaps, the snaps these Florida boys had. I, and look, everyone raced hard, uh, but there wasn't really any sketchy moves. I felt like everyone raced super uh, responsible, super um, careful, you know, for how many people there were. So then I finally make it to the front and which the front of this race is so much different than the back of this race. Uh, best buddies, you know, on the front. So I go and I start doing a little bit of work because again, there, there was a break that was maybe 30 seconds up the road. But on this course, it, you know, the pack is just rolling, just rolling thunder. I mean, we're just flying through some of these roads. So, you know, a group that's got 30 seconds, it wasn't super dangerous, but I still needed to do my part for the team, my part for Chaz. So I did get to the front and, uh, you know, give a little bit of work to try to at least make it to where the, the Peloton didn't just give up chasing. You know, I want to keep the momentum rolling. So I pulled a little bit on the front and then I went, you know, to recover. I tried this time to not go so far back because it was so difficult to move up. Um, I actually got myself in a pretty good position down on the left side after Chaz had just brought back a move. So you can see Chaz to the right, he's on the front, and then there's a Best Buddies going up the road, uh, which they are a marked team, right? Michael Hernandez, he was on there, uh, Travis McCabe, hitters. So then I make this big effort, because I just had this, this momentum. I mean, it was just so perfect. I'd like to say that I knew what I was doing here, but it just sort of was... I sort of lucked into this position. So I jump on this guy's wheel uh, and get into the second break of the day, which just, look, despite however I finish, I love being relevant and playing bikes. And and man, I played some bikes. So then we got this other guy here who joined us. So strong. I'm not totally sure, though, who this was on the bike, the best buddies, but he wasn't, he was not all in on the break. I was pretty all in. I felt like we could do it, but the guy in the green, man, his pulls were 0 .02 seconds. I mean, he just pulled off essentially. So I think that he was maybe just trying to be in a break just in case it, it succeeded, but he wasn't all in. I think if he had been all in, maybe this could have had some potential, uh, but we ended up getting caught with, I think, going into like the last lap or like two laps to go which when you're in a break and you're going hard and then the pack catches you, ugh, it's, it's so difficult. Cause, I mean, you see what kind of watts I'm doing, you know, but everyone just has so much momentum coming up from behind you when they're chasing. Now, Chaz, just shortly after this, he made the winning move of about five guys. And so this is the last lap, about the last half a lap. Now, when we came across the finish line, Chaz only had 20 seconds on this group. And so I wanted to try to be as far up front as possible to either, you know, uh, stifle some, some bridge attempts or be there in case yeah, they got caught and there was a counter move. So I'm doing my best. I'm working really hard to stay up at the front. I mean, it's just, boy, <laughs> there's just no way to replicate this kind of, of intensity when you're training. It just... There's just no way. There's just so many guys flying, bro. I mean, these, I'm just not used to doing thousand watt sprints. You know, you can just see my power. It's just not where it needs to be for, for top end racing. Uh, but here I'm working for Nick. I'm trying to try to make sure that this move doesn't completely just go away. Chaz though, they've got about a minute up the road. It's one K to go. Um, so Chaz is basically already finishing, and then there goes uh, Nick, our sprinter. 
Um, he kind of died out there at the end, but I felt like I did my job to get him in a good position to keep him up front. Um, so, you know, I personally, I got 29th out of 72, which I'm so excited about, man. Uh, but Chazzy boy, Chazzy boy, dude, second on the day. Go, 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 Mikey wins the first race of the season in front of Chaz Thurman and Zach Gregg. Bike racing can be so frustrating and you can get real mad. And especially if you flew across the country, it'd be a bummer. Uh, but when you execute a plan and, and our boy Chazzy gets second, dude. And that's what's so awesome about a team, right? Is like, well, I don't even know what I finished, but it doesn't matter because our team got second. And so I feel, I feel just as happy, slightly less happy, but almost as happy as, uh, you know, if I had gotten second. Freaking stoked, dude. When you come to a race like this, are you thinking about other people or are you just that fit that it's just kind of like? No, no, I'm always, always, you know, the competition and Hand cycles for me, local racing is always harder because you're more marked out. And, you know, this year racing with Travis and McCabe and Ruben, you know, I don't have to be as marked out just because Travis is reigning crit national champ for the pro category. So, uh, yeah, it's a little easier this year for me to move around and not be as barked out. Uh, it was really fast from the start, uh, really aggressive, but nobody really wanted to commit to anything. You know, groups would go, and I think the groups were just too big and not the right combination. And then I think these roads are just kind of not the greatest, so the roads just get heavy on people's legs. And eventually, you know, just you can't get organized and chase as well. And uh, one guy went, and then two other guys uh, bridge, and then me and your teammate, uh, Bridge across, and that was that was pretty much all all it was. And so in the finish, you broke away right there at the end, or what? No, happened? no, uh, I was cramping really bad going up the last hill, and I was waiting for somebody to attack, and thankfully they didn't. So I was sitting on the back of the group of three, and just uh, came off the back a little bit, and just tried to jump them with a little bit of speed because we were kind of playing a little cat and mouse, and just got the gap and went to the finish. All right, dude. Second. Yeah. I, I mean, second to like. He Not should a be nobody. pro. He should be pro. <laughs> well, nah. that picture that picture that I posted in the video today was with him, him and Peter Sagan. Oh, really? Yeah. Dang. And, and and Sagan's like talking to him. So. Yeah, I mean, he was hurting though. I mean, I don't know. It was hard to tell. That the echelon, I think the, the project echelon guy was super good too. But that was that was fun. The move fun. The move went. Five of us got away with two laps to go. So about 24 miles to go. And then we stuck it. I think we put about a minute 15 on the field, and then uh, we ended up dropping two guys. So three of us came to the line, and I got stuck leading it out. But we were literally like going five miles an hour, and Michael just attacked super far out. We got food. We got food. We got food. We've got a family platter because last night, I, my new vibe is that I want to be catered. I want a whole catering service just for me. And I think that um, bowls and plates are just, those Those are for we, the weaklings. You know what I mean? That's, bro, I didn't get a fork. <laughs> Dude, yes. This is everything I'm about is just quality food, quality food, and quantity. I'm so excited. I also got an acai bowl um, for dessert, and I got two of those elderberry things. Dude, I'm so happy. I'm so freaking happy. I am 97.2% just as happy that Chaz got second 
as if it was my, my own self. <clears throat> but I will tell you that it took me a while to knock off the dust. That first initial breakaway, I was like, oh, what? <laughs> it is so difficult to replicate race speed, no matter how much you train, no matter how much you Zwift, it's just difficult. All right, um, I'm gonna eat some hot food. Let me give you a little quick slow-mo boom of this guy. Winter's gone now, we're for summer. I guess that means it's been three years calling you. And I don't even try, try to remember. I've never had sweet potato noodles before. I'm actually not a fan of sweet potatoes, uh, but these rock socks. The quinoa, the, the there wasn't guacamole last time, last night. They were out of avocado and guacamole, which was a tragedy. Uh, but this time they gave me extra. Well, I uh, am a failure. And I just honestly cannot fit it, the rest of this in my stomach. But you know that you have a second stomach for sweets. And so now I can definitely still do the hemp seed, strawberries, blueberries, acai bowl. I'm so proud of Chazzy. Uh, it's definitely, the more he does well, it's like, I mean, he's gonna get picked up, right? I mean, he's gonna get picked up by a, a, a bigger team than mine. Um, and so hopefully I can try to talk to him about like what can we do to keep you on this squad? And, and if he's doing really well, can maybe moving into 2022, can I up the budget uh, to bring on other riders to make this squad be something, you know, maybe not on the level of Legion, but, you know, big? We'll cross that bridge when we get there, though. The Pineapples in Paradise collection closes what you'll see this Sunday. So it closes Sunday night. So if you want to jump in on that Paradise and Pineapples, Pineapples and Paradise collection, go to elielcycling.com. It's the blue, I mean, the green one is, is awesome, but that blue one, that blue fruit kit is, it just pops, dude. Also a huge shout out to Mark Tucker. He's a local guy to us and he got fifth in the road race. Straight up fifth. I mean, dude, He I did a video about him not only is Mark such an amazing human, but he's a great bike racer. And, uh, and, I, and our local community in the Central Valley of Fresno County, essentially, is, is starting to produce some hitters. I don't really know how else to put it, but man, it feels good to race bikes. And man, does it feel good to do well. Anyways, as always, Vegan Cyclist. Yeah!